Hello and welcome to another edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. Right off the bat on the old show today. Haven't talked about this machine in some time. Remember the Tesla Roadster? Well, in that whole event where they talked about ludicrous speed, Elon Musk let out that a new Roadster will be coming to showrooms in 2019. Now, this vehicle hasn't actually been built in 2011, and we got a little bit more news coming out of this machine as well. But let's get back to that ludicrous mode that we talked about in the Model S. The folks over at Autoline.tv let out a little insight on just what exactly it takes to get down to that magic number of 2.8 seconds to 60 miles an hour. And it's kind of interesting because when you think about it, most of us are petrol heads or car guys or whatnot, and we know about what it takes to make an internal combustion engine make more power. You can increase the displacement, you can help with the intake and the exhaust as far as allowing the vehicle to breathe a lot better, because basically an internal combustion engine is one great big air pump. Then not to mention if you want to throw a little force induction its way, turbocharging, supercharging, maybe a little nitrous oxide. More air means more spark, means more fuel, means more power. Yes, we all know about these things very well, but when it comes to an electric vehicle, even though I raced RC cars for the longest time, it's still kind of a situation I don't really understand. Now let's talk about what it takes, or at least the two modification that it takes for ludicrous mode. The main one being a fuse, a fuse that's actually inside of the battery that kind of keeps everything harmonious as far as the current is concerned. Now when you think about a fuse, think about a layman's fuse, like a 30 amp fuse, once you get over that amperage of 30 amps, it'll burn the fuse out and kill off connection in between the two uh, circuits, if you will. And this allows it to keep it, well it keeps things from maybe catching fire or getting too hot or things like this. And this is the same situation that's in the Model S. There's a very large fuse inside of this machine, but Tesla has developed their very own fuse that is actually electronic. In fact, it's got a small lithium-ion battery, and it actually, well, it monitors the current down to the millisecond and can actually shut it off in an instant, but it actually allows it, instead of just going over to a certain situation and shutting it off, it monitors and keeps it in tune and keeps it from getting out of hand. The second modification is actually using some materials. Instead of using steel or, or uh, certain alloys to actually make the connections themselves, they use a brand new one called Econel. Now this is not brand new, if it will, but it's actually a situation where it's a very trick alloy, and it actually stays soft, stays springy, even under high heat and high current values, and doesn't get hard or brittle or anything like this. This allows this machine to go from the 1,300 maximum amps that it would run before now to 1,500 maximum amps, which makes that 0 to 60 in 2.8 seconds. Now, when we talked about the Roadster... We talked about the Model S. The Model S being ludicrous mode, that is a reference to the old movie Spaceballs. Well, there's another one coming that's called Maximum Plaid, which is from the Spaceball movies as well. Apparently, that's what the new Roadster's going to have. There's a lot of people pointing at this thing's going to be able to go well faster than 2.8 seconds to 60. The quickest car on the planet does it around 2.5 seconds. So it'll be interesting to see if Tesla could have two of the quickest 260 machines on the planet. Next up on the list, well, we talked about this particular situation in the past. Jeremy Clarkson's final ride around the Top Gear circuit. And it was kind of a mystery on which one of these machines, either the 488 GTB Ferrari, the La Ferrari, or, and I said it was the SLS Mercedes, but it is the AMG GTS version. Now, the La Ferrari was actually loaned by Nick Mason, a very, very big time uh, musician, and a big friend of Jeremy Clarkson's as well, loaned him the car for the day. Now, the other two machines, which apparently are the vehicles he may have made his last laps around the circuit in, and it's a little bit of an interesting situation because there's several outlets claiming the 48 GTB is the last car he drove, and a lot of people are pointing towards the Mercedes AMG GTS. So, 
Not for 100% sure. In fact, now that I'm talking out loud, I'm not for 100% sure why I'm even talking about it. Because there's no final deal out, at least as of yet. So, we'll keep you in tune if we hear any more. Next up on the list, well, the Dodge Viper, or SRT Viper, if you will. In a weird little situation, the folks over at Auto Forecast Solutions, LLC, is reporting that this vehicle may not be long for this earth. Apparently, by August of 2017, production will halt. Now, they didn't say whether it will halt entirely, forever, or if it's going to be another stoppage while they develop a new machine. But with all the trouble that FCA has been in trouble with here lately, with a lot of fines coming down its way for, from NHTSA, not to mention they've been pushing back a lot of product, and the whole deal with Sergio Marchione trying to get a partnership group together... It's a weird situation over at FCA. It would be a shame to see their flagship go away, but maybe the Hellcat is now the new flagship for the brand. We'll keep you in tune if we hear any more about this deal. Next up on the list, the tragic story of Jules Bianchi, who actually passed away only a handful of days ago. In fact, his funeral just happened a couple of days ago. In fact, the day before the taping of this program looked like a fantastic group of people showed up to this particular grand event. I guess calling it an event's a terrible thing to call a funeral. But a lot of current Formula One drivers actually showed up, were pallbearers and whatnot at the funeral. I'm sure bringing a lot of comfort to Jules and his family and all of his friends. Now, here's an interesting situation involving Mr. Bianchi. And it involves the FIA. And it involves the number that he actually had on the side of his machine, number 17. The FIA has now retired that number, which I first thought was pretty odd. Of course, it's only been a couple of years since Grand Prix drivers could actually choose their numbers. You think of some of the guys who have died in the past, many time champions that didn't have their numbers retired. But the trick is back in the day... Grand Prix, Formula One guys, their numbers were actually where they finished in the points the year before or where their teammates or new teammates actually finished in the points the year before. So they actually didn't have a current number throughout their deal. So it's kind of a nice situation to see the FIA actually retiring the number 17 from Grand Prix Racing for good. Next up on the list, this looks like a little intersection in any town, any place, anywhere around the world, but it is entirely false. It's entirely fake. This is all just a deal that's put together by the University of Michigan. This is called M-City. M-City is an actual place where they're going to test a lot of autonomous car technology, which needs an awful lot of testing because this stuff's got to be right when it goes into prime time. Not only the University of Michigan actually put this thing together, but it's also the groups as far as a lot of manufacturers have chipped on it as well. And if you see from this aerial shot, it is a massive facility, 32 acres of sprawling, well, fake city parts and fake outskirts of cities and whatnot. A lot of roundabouts, a lot of places, switchbacks and things to do a lot of heavy-duty testing with these particular units. A very, very cool deal. It's up in Michigan at the University of Michigan. It's in the city. Pretty slick little situation. And that's all there was that I thought was worth talking about for this edition of Motor Cars Enthusiasts. If you want to jump on over to the Facebook page, the link's down in the show notes. Also, if you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can do so at any time and get the first dibs on the brand new shows as soon as they come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again real soon.